Let's go through the transform options in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I've got a JPEG with a lock background. I'm going to alt double click the layer thumbnail to unlock the file. Um, sorry, unlock the layer so that it's editable. Um, we can go through the main menu bar and go to edit and free transform or we can do the control T keyboard shortcut which is what I'm going to use in this video. So I'm going to do a control T and when you do control T you get transformation handles and you can start resizing. So it's just like working on any image in Word or PowerPoint. You can resize, you can rotate, you can do whatever you want. So you only get rotational handles when you're outside the corners. After you do a transformation, we can either cancel it by pressing escape on your um, keyboard or you can use it on the options bar. I don't use the options bar because then I have to take my mouse and go find that little tiny spot on my screen. Or I can hit escape. If I want to lock in the transformation, I can hit enter or hit the check mark. So I'm going to hit enter. Okay. Um, so there's a simple transformation. It doesn't look very good. I'm going to undo that with a control alt Z. I'm going to bring up my transformation handles again, control T. This time I'm going to hold my shift key down when I resize. When I hold my shift key and resize from any of the four corners, I keep the proportion of the image. I'm reducing the height and the width at the same rate. So again, that's holding the shift key. Now, if I undo that, I'm just hitting escape. I'm going to go back into my transformation handles with control T. I can go from any of the corners holding my shift key. Now the reason the picture goes up here is because I pulled in that direction. Okay, I'm going to control T again. This time I'm going to hold down the shift key and see what happens when I go from a middle point. So here holding the shift key doesn't keep it in proportion. Okay, this is out of proportion. That does not look good. So when you want to resize an image and you want it to look normal, you hold down your shift key and you go from a corner point only. Okay, that's one of the main things that I want to stress to you. Um, so we got again our rotational handles. If you put your cursor outside the four corners, you'll get the rotational handles. When you rotate, it's rotating off of a pivot point in the middle. Okay, now that point can be changed. I'm going to hit escape, control T to get back in. This is your reference point. So it's like taking a pin and pushing it into different locations. So let's change the reference point by clicking the bottom left. That little thingamajig that was in the middle is now down here. Watch what happens when I rotate. Okay. So it's up to you if you want to change the reference point. By default, it's always in the middle when you do a control T. You can also manually move it. Let's say I want to pivot it off of the emblem on the front of this Porsche. Now when I control T and I rotate, it keeps that point. Okay. Um, let's do another control T and let's talk about some other options. Um, let's go through the options bar. We have X and Y. X is just like math. X is your horizontal. So if I change that value, it's changing the value or the location of the reference point. I don't usually mess with these, but just so you can see, you can either type in a number or you can use this slider. If you put your cursor right on the X, you can click your mouse and slide and it moves it over there. Okay, I prefer to just pick it up and move it myself. I'm going to hit escape and control T again. Same thing for your Y value. Here we have width and height. You can see the image is at 100%. Um, this will maintain aspect ratio. So that's like holding the shift key. Let's leave it unchecked. Okay, un like not pressed in. So now if I decide I want to change the width, I can either type in the value on the options bar or I can use the slider. Okay, go whichever way you want. Now if I go too much, it starts to flip the picture around. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. That does not look like a car that is supposed to. I'm going to hit escape. Control T. Now let's turn on the link. When you turn on the link and you change either the height or the width, I'm going to change height you'll see the width will reduce at the same rate. And the reason it's pulling in from all four corners is because of the reference point in the middle. Let's hit escape and control T again. Let's move on. We have our um, angle here um, for rotation. So if you know you exactly want it at 23 degrees, feel free to type it in and hit enter and it will lock it in. I'm going to undo that and control T again. 
Um, you can also put your cursor on the little icon and slide it, okay? Either way. So all of these things can be done through the options bar if you want. And then we have over here what are called skews, okay? We have a horizontal and a vertical skew. Easiest thing to do is just mess around with it and you can see what it does. Here's what a horizontal skew, I'm increasing it. The more I increase it, the more it skews. I can skew in either direction. Okay, so H is for horizontal, V for vertical, and then we have this interpolation. We'll get into that in another video. I'm going to hit escape, and let's go through the last icon that's on the transform options bar, and we have what is called the warp tool. Okay, now when you click on this icon, you get more of a grid. It's divided into nine equal parts. Okay, this is what we call the rule of thirds, and you can start changing these points. Okay. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. This is a fun one to mess around with. You can grab any of the lines or you can grab points and you can manipulate your image. When you're done, you can either hit escape if you don't want, want to keep it or again, you can hit enter. I'm going to hit escape so I don't mess around with it. All right, let's move on. Control T again, all right, instead of using the options bar. All right, we already talked about we can drag these points and if you hold the shift key, it, contain, it will uh, keep the same aspect ratio. Um, but you can also, when you're in your transformation options, so control T and you right mouse click inside the picture or whatever you're trying to transform, you'll get a pop-up menu. Free transform is what we've been doing. Scale we know is size, so if you can rotate here, you can skew here. There's some other ones that are not available on the options bar. Notice we have distort and perspective. Those are new. We just went through warp. Let's look at distort. Let's grab a point, see what happens. Okay, this is what distort does. I'm going to undo that, control T, right mouse click again. Let's look at perspective. Perspective works off of middle points, okay? So you can change the perspective. Whoops, let's try a corner point for perspective. Okay, so the angle of perspective, depending on what you're trying to do. You can go from E any way you want. Okay, so a lot of this you just want to get in there and mess around. I'm going to hit Escape, Control T again, right click. So we also have some preset rotations, so counterclockwise, clockwise, 180. Um, these two are pretty handy, flip horizontal. Let's say I want the car, but I want it going the other direction. Look, flip, it's done. You have to be careful with what you flip, because if you flip things with text, then the text is going to be written backwards, but this looks pretty, you know, Nobody's going to see that the Porsche logo, you know, is written backwards, okay? So let's escape and control T again. Um, so you can flip it vertical. You could also have rotated it to get the same result, okay? All right, last thing I want to go through is the um, edit menu. Um, so again, we can get into the, um, let me turn the control T off for a second. So as long as I'm on the layer and it's unlocked, I can also go to edit and transform again is your control T. So I don't use the menu for this, but you have a transform flyout, and you have the same ones that we just saw when you right click. Now, this is kind of can be handy. All right. Um, so it'll redo the last thing you just did. I don't know what the last thing I just did, but notice there's a keyboard shortcut assigned to it. So I'm going to just click it. Shift Control T does that. Now, if I keep hitting Shift Control T, it's going to keep doing whatever the last thing I did was. Okay, so depending on what you did last, it will do different things. I'm going to. My, my picture is totally destroyed. Okay, I can't even un. I would have to undo it a bunch of times. So I'm going to cheat and do a F12. Remember, if F12 does not work for you on your laptops, you can always go to the File menu and revert this way, but now I've got a locked background, so I'm going to again alt double click the layer thumbnail to unlock the layer, and then I can continue on with my control T. If you take one thing away from this lesson, when you do a control T and you want to resize something, 99% of the time you want to keep it in perspective, and the ratio at which you increase or decrease needs to be locked together. In other words, hold the shift key when you resize, okay? Um, so again, this does not look like the car. Now if I throw in the shift key, now it's scaling it 
in proportion. Okay, and lastly, the alt shift can be real handy too if you don't want to have to pick it up and move it. It's based again off the reference point. So when you hold alt and shift, you get the same, you know, ratio, but it's based off of the reference point. And one other thing I want you to experiment with, with control T, hold down some different keys while you're, um, while you're doing the transform. What happens when you hold down the alt key from a corner? Only the alt key. Okay. What happens when you control T and then you hold down alt and control at the same time? Okay, so there's some other ones built in there. You just have to sort of experiment and get some interesting results depending on what it is you're trying to do. What happens when you hold down Alt and Shift? You know, what happens Control and Shift? Maybe nothing, but you need to experiment. It's always going to be dealing with the Alt, the Control, and the Shift key when you want to, you know, try to throw in an extra something into the transform. All right, I'm going to hit Escape and get back out, and I'm going to have you guys now experiment with the Control T keyboard shortcut um, for um, transforming your images. And um, one other thing before we go, you can, if you're in your move tool, you can turn on your transform control handles on the options bar. I don't like to use this, but when you do it, you don't even have to hit control T. Now you're already in the resize. So that's just a personal preference. Again, that's only while you're in the move tool. You can turn this option on or off. I prefer it off, but I just wanted to let you know that you can turn it on if you like it. All right, that's it for the transform tool.